Five, five boys and me and another counselor. And we started talking about hopes and dreams. And one of the one of the campers he said, I really want to be a video game professional player. I was like, that is awesome. Like I would love to do that. I didn't even know that you could do that. And then another another boy he said, I really want to go to college. And then he started saying, well, why do you want to go to college? And, and I asked him, and he said, well, I'd be the first one in my family to go. I was like, that's pretty cool. And so the week went on. We had a lot of fun. This was over at Lopez Lake. But the reason why I went there, it's because of a quote I live by. It's by Randy Posh. He wrote a book called The Last Lecture. It's not about how to achieve your dreams. It's about how to live your life. If you live your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself and the dreams will come to you. And that's the whole reason why I went to Camp Hope. Because my whole life, I've been a caregiver. And I've been somebody that's always wanted to live a mission of helping people. And so that's where I'd start today. We're talking about dreams, and so we're going to go into vision boards and goals here in a little bit. My dream has always been to help people. And I couldn't quite figure out how to do that until one day I saw a speaker named Doug Tip. And I was like, that is so cool. I want to do that. I want to be a speaker. And that's when things started to click. Because I started to see how I could help people through being a speaker. And by doing that, I could then accomplish one of my other wants, which was to travel. So my dream, my big goal, my big dream, and I would encourage you to think about your dreams. What's something that you really want to do? You really want to travel. Maybe you want to be a speaker. Maybe you want to be a video game professional. What is something that you really want to do? And kind of think about that for a second. My story is the reason why I had this dream. My story was, when I was nine years old, my family was in a serious car crash. I'm an only child. My mom, my dad, and myself were in the car. There was a drunk driver that ran into our car, and since that day, my mom has lived in bed ever since that day when I was nine years old. For 18 years, my mom's lived in bed, sleeping on one side of her body every single day. And it changed my world upside down. At 10 years old, I became a caregiver for my mom. With no brothers and sisters, it was just me to help her out. It's been very difficult. She had six herniated discs, which means she had a really bad back from the accident. And things started to pile up from there. Once she was, she was like the go mom. She was always helping me out, always picking me up from school. And all of a sudden, things changed. And her health turned into different things. It turned into pulmonary embolisms, which she couldn't breathe. We'd have to take her to the hospital quite a bit. And then it turned into cancer. And it was a really hard time for me, and it still has been a hard time. And so my story is about being a caregiver, but it's also about something else. The medical bills started to pile up for my family, because my mom was going to the hospital quite a bit. Okay. And my dad was trying to take care of his business, how he made money, as well as my mom and myself. Stress started to pile up for him taking care of the family and the business. He started to now have ulcers in between working. He was having ulcers at lunchtime because he was going over so much stress trying to take care of everybody. 
one thing leads to another. We end up losing our house to foreclosure. We went through bankruptcy and went as far as homeless for a couple of months. A family took us in, a family, a close family friend, and I lived in a loft in a little crick, crickety bed, and the six one frame fitting in this bed was a little rough. That is why I wanted to be a speaker, because I genuinely love youth, and I love kids, and I want to be able to help make the best possible day that they can have every day. And so the dreams of the unprofessional speaker, I can honestly say, this week, this is a kid that's been through foreclosure, cars repossessed, lost everything, dealing with a mom that's been in pain for 18 years, and she's still in pain today. My dad, my best friend. This week, I have been able speak with 700 high school students and I had a hundred almost a hundred stickers that said you have changed my life thank you this has been a life-changing experience and I tell you that to let you know that anybody whatever you want to do you can make that happen and this is how this happened, and this is what I would inspire you as we're starting to think about our visions and our goals and what we want. There was three goals that I knew I had to put in place to come out of this really bad situation I've been in. Throughout high school, I knew I really had to get a college education. I knew I needed to get some type of education, whether that was college, whether that was trade school, vocational school, I needed something. And the education, I knew I needed to find money to be able to pay for that. So I worked really hard to get scholarships. I, was, I asked anybody and everybody, how can you help me? I found out about FAFSA. I found out about Cal Grants. I went to the Rotary and gave speeches and I said, hey, can you, basically, can you help me out? Then the next goal in terms of education was I knew I needed to continue reading. Reading was gonna be the window of opportunity for me to think and be the best I can be. So when I read, I then found out that with that education, the next step, I couldn't do this by myself. I needed mentors. I needed people to help me out. People that knew what it was like not to live in a scarcity mind of struggles and dealing with pain and suffering at home. I needed people that could help me think clearer. And today, I'm so excited. There's mentors in here. There's adults. There's people, a lot of people in here. Third thing with the goal is I knew I needed to get an education. I knew I needed to get mentors. But I knew I needed to put a timeline together. I needed to have a time frame, time frame of how to get this stuff done. I knew if I saw, hey, by December 31st, 2012, I'm going to make this happen. So when we put these goals together, kind of think about it in your head. What do you want to do? And start to think about the small steps that it might take to get there. I would really encourage you that education and mentors is probably a good start. I would say it is a good start. After the goals, things started to come together with obstacles. Obstacles came into my life. And obstacles do come into our lives. But it's in terms of being ready for that. The obstacles were the state of mind. I was like, I'm coming in this pain and suffering and I'm dealing with my family at home, the stress of my dad and worrying about my mom. And then an obstacle came in 2009 where my mom actually had to come down to San Diego and get a very serious surgery. She had pseudoxinomia peritonea, which is a one in a million rare abdomen cancer. They split her open from the bottom of her neck to her pelvis bone and took out a lot of organs in her body because of that cancer that make her stay alive. It was in that obstacle when I will never forget how important my faith became in my life. My faith in myself, my faith in God, and my faith in prayer. 
The obstacles then kept coming with doubts. I can't do this. I can't be a speaker. I can't go in front of people. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. I've never done this before. Obstacles were there, but I was ready because I had the mentors to fall back on to help me and support. And that's what today's about, is kind of putting the goals together and having those people to help support. After the obstacles, the final thing kind of came together, and that was the why. You heard Chris talk earlier, he kind of mentioned the why. The why is what I knew was going to get me past those obstacles. And that was the motivation. And the why for me is my faith. It's the family. I love my family. People that love and support. The faith, the family, but it was two real, two real reasons and two stories that I'll never forget that motivated me. And one is about cheese. Anybody ever had cheese before? Show of hands, you had cheese? Okay. One's about cheese. And you can heard somebody say, cut the cheese. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Cheese. There was a time in my life where I realized how expensive cheese was. Because there was a time in my life where I was eating tortillas, canned beans, and cheese, burritos. For pretty much most, a lot of my meals. And I realized that cheese became too expensive to put into that burrito. And I remember that time, and I will never forget how expensive cheese is. And that's what motivates me every day to keep fighting to be a speaker. The other story is about a car which I nicknamed a lowrider. Anybody kind of heard this idea of a lowrider? It's like, it bounces a little bit, it's low on the ground. Our cars were repossessed, we lost all of our cars. My dad went and got a lowrider, which is what I called an old Buick, Oldsmobile, for, it's an old car. But I gave it a nickname, I'm like, that's a lowrider. There was a night, he works, he still works six days a week, but there was a night he was coming home on a Friday night and the car used to break down all the time. And he said, hey, he called me up. The car broke down. Can you come help me out with the car? So I, I walked about a quarter of a mile to go help him out just down the street just to get the car home. We worked on, worked on the car. It wouldn't, it wouldn't start. I said, you know what? Get out of here. Just get on the side of the road. Sit there. I'm going to get behind this car and I'm going to push it home. Just get out of my way. I was so frustrated at my dad. I was like, just... Move! And so I started getting behind the car. I was 18 years old. And I'm pushing this low rider as hard as I can. And I'm pushing and I'm pushing. I get it about 10 feet. My legs are burning. My back is hurting. And he said, he came up to me and he said, Son, just, just let it go. Leave the car on the side of the road. Let's just walk home. That was the turning point where I said, I never want to put my family through this. Ever. So the last thing I'd say is, when you figure out your why for your goals, hopefully you kind of think about stuff that's going on in your life. When you put that why together, you match with those goals, you visualize what you want. Anything can happen. You can be a speaker, you can be a professional video game player. Because it's when you can put the head together, thoughts become things. When if you think about something, it will happen. And when you put your heart to it, I'll never forget an address. 109 Seabreeze Court. That's the address that I lived in when times were very, very hard. So when we put that together, we put good people around us, like we got here at Camp Hope, like we got here at Camp Hope Alliance, Hope Alliance for America, a lot of good people, Casey, Yoli, Beth, Milo, where's Milo at the time? <laughs> when we put all these good people together, there's a lot of people here that want to make us help together. So I want to help us all. 
as we get ready to do our vision goals and our vision boards. Can everybody please stand up? Please stand up. Something I realize is that when we're putting the goals together, the hardest step is the first. So right now, if you can, right where you are, if you can kind of, kind of huddle up with the people on your side, huddle up right here. All right. On the count of three, <laughs> on the count of three, we're going to take the first step forward all together towards our vision, vision goal and our first small step to our goals. On the count of three, we're going to just take one step forward. Don't, don't fall on the chairs for me. Just one step forward. One, two, three. Thank you, guys.